drop the banner for the football. This fall, the Warren Red Raider football team captures their 13th sectional title, beating the Lamoni Bulldogs at SUNY Rockville. As a side note uh, to the athletic program here at Warren it's impressive to point out that we will be hanging our 67th sectional banner tonight. We would like to thank our coaches, young men, and both of these fine coaches. It's my pleasure to bring them out one more time. As they call your name, come out to the center of the floor, and the captains will come out and drop our banner. I'll start with our coaches. I'll be here tonight. First, our modified coaching staff, Coach Day, Coach Davis, and Coach Denny. Our JD staff, Coach Lewardy. Coach Walensky and Coach Kelleher, and our varsity coaches, Coach White, Coach Souls, Coach Mir, Coach Donovan, Coach Davidson, Coach Kohler, and Coach Morgan. Now the members of the team Now the members of the 2017 championship football team. Sophomore, Tyler Ackett. Come on, Come on, Come on. Sophomore, Colin Bish. Sophomore, Demetrius David. Sophomore, Isaiah Garcia.
Hello everybody and welcome to today's Section 5 matchup between the 9 and 4 Hornell Red Raiders and the 7 and 6 Cuba Rushford Rebels. I'm Bob Peicher along with Joe Flint from the, Bro uh, Mayha, from the Maple City Taj broadcast booth. And Joe, like you said, a couple of years ago we went down there and Cuba Rushford ran us off the court. So it's a new season. Yeah, you really can't take this uh, team lightly because they run a good program. They're they're pretty good every year. They actually surprised some people uh, last year in sectionals. So, um, like I said, I think they run a good program over there. So I don't think this is going to be a, uh, a walk in the park for Hornell. And I noticed that number 13, Ben Frank, six foot four, just a big physique of a kid. Did you yeah, see him? Yeah. He just got all muscle. Yeah. Andrew Trufino, his brother, played on the JV team. And there's number 10, Dawson Sanderson. There's number 13 we were talking about, Ben Frank. 21, Andrew Clement. And 23, Trevor Smith. Chase Freeland, who had the game winner a few days ago against Wellsville. Timmy Smith had some great plays as well. Spencer Wyand. Actually, the whole team played well. Matt Smith and Dante Milner. Like we talked about, Luke Smith is still sick. He is here today, or he was here. Yeah, he's there still, okay. Um, yeah, and so that's surprising that uh, Luke's still not recovered enough to, to start the game. I guess Meyer is still sick, too. Yeah. And um, I'm surprised he didn't let him. I wouldn't even want him around me. <laughs> well, uh, and, and better that the, the flu runs through the team at this point rather than a few weeks from now. Yeah, that's true. Make them all sick now. You're right, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from JVs, we're missing Connor Smith and Eli Dunn were out with the flu. They weren't even here today. JV still won handily. Like I said, I'm expecting a decent game. Uh, you know, their program is something. They're they're decent every year. I think. Uh, Would you say they're seven and six, Bob? Um, yep, seven and six. I was talking to their coach Carl Holmes, and he, and he said they're three and zero oh in the league, and he said that's a problem though. Uh, they play in a league that there's basically a, a lot of D schools in, so yeah. league wise, they don't get the the competition they would like. And Matt Smith start things out. Hornell was on fire in the JV game. Well, Matt hit a bunch of critical threes in that game against Wellsville in the, the second half. And right back at you, number 21, Andrew Clement. Inside, Milner. That's good to see. Get, let's get Dante going early and see if he can get in the rhythm in this game. The big kid, Ben Frank, tries to put up a 10-footer. Yeah. yeah, that was a nice pump fake. Got a little open space. And look at Chase. That was a good no ball by the referee. Yeah, it was. Side shot, nothing there. Wow, comes right down to the hands of Milliner. Freeland, I like this quick passing. And Freeland for three. Milliner with a little hook. He's got soft hands. Very good around the basket. Like I said, I think we just need to get him back in rhythm. He's been out of rhythm a little bit here in the last few games. And ball's going to be thrown out of bounds. 7-3 to three on the John N. Dagan scoreboard. Point guard has a lot of uh, jobs too. One of them is to get certain guys involved early to get there in a rhythm and get them in their game. It's going to be a hold out front. It's number three, Andrew Trufino. 
Yeah, Tofino looks like he's a pretty good defender, and he's pretty quick, so he's going to give Chase uh, a little bit of a challenge. His brother played on the JV team. He was a very good player as well. I'm assuming it's his brother, had the same last name. Very fundamentally sound Tofino is with his defense. And count it, Milner! Early on, it looks like to me that, that, that Frank isn't that aggressive inside. No, for his size and stuff, you kinda know. Let, he, he's kind of letting Dante do what he wants, and then he's putting his arms up the way too late. He's not doing the early work to keep Dante from getting to his spots. Blocked by Wyand. And Wyand gonna get fouled out front. Number 21, Andrew Clement. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. I think yeah. <laughs> Spencer dribbled the ball off his foot. There was a little contact there. But. Outside shot by Smith, in and out. Rebound inside, put back by 23. Trevor Smith. Kind of another, that's a critical call because that's the second foul on Clements, and he looks like he's one of the main players for Cuba Rushford. Outside shot is good. spot there and, uh, and hung out and waited for someone to give him the basketball. Take like a break, we'll be back. Yes, hello, hi. I received a letter today from Workman's. You did your homework. You knew who to call and you could tell right away you were in good hands. They told you exactly how things would go and they were right every step of the way. No surprises is a good thing. You got the results you deserve and you're thankful for the professionals fighting on your side. Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys. Are your children in the right car seat for their age and size? It may be too late to check when you're on the road. Fortunately, you're on the couch. Don't think you know. Know you know. Welcome back. Tofino that time. Yeah. by Tofino. A lot of times uh, the you know, shorter guards like that don't like to even put anything up in the paint. And we're now opening up a 14-5 lead. Not letting the Seneca Zoo 
<laughs> Sucked him there. Yeah, that's a good home court advantage. Cornell has with a nice student body crowd. Yeah, they do. You don't get that everywhere. Cuba Rusher coming with a press. Great turnover. Defino again with a rebound. There's a scrap, a scrapper in there too. Foul on Timmy Smith inside. Fina misses the front end. Derek Kapumski into the game for the first time. And Luke Smith.
pass was deflected by Hornell right into the hands of Trevor Smith. Nice pass oh, by nice pass. Smith. Nice finish by Spencer Wyatt. Sorry, we're having some streaming issues here. We're back live, but unfortunately we're not a very good stream right now. 19 to 9, Hornell up on top. Timeout, Hornell. Let's see if we can get this stream fixed, Joe. Stay right with you here until we. Nineteen to nine is the score. If you're just joining us, I apologize. Like I said, we're getting some streaming issues. It's timeout. We're still in the first quarter. Yeah, it's, it, as far as Ronald's else concerned, you can't really, you know, put the the positive start on any one thing other than they're moving the basketball well. We've got Matt Smith hit a couple three point shots. Other than that, we've kind of moved the ball around and gotten some easy looks inside. Yep. Shot by McComsky is good. Two pointer. Yeah, he looked very comfortable from that range. I he wish did. he would take more of those. I don't, you know, I don't think he's a, a true three-point shooter. I think he looks really good on that. We're gonna go off here. He's a, it's a second. Oh, another cut hand by. Spencer Wyant, that was happening. Jackson White cut his hand in the first JV game. Now I see Spencer Wyant's all taped up and bloodied on his hand. Huh. Strange. Blocked inside, good job. Yeah, and Timmy just kind of telegraphed that. And, you know, some people telegraph passes. He telegraphed what he was going to do. And basically, the defender waited for him. Yeah. And kick it outside, no good. Good recovery by Freeland that time. It's Patenic been to the game. He, like you said, he's been sick. He missed the last game being sick. Seven, five, two, it's going to take us to the end of the first. Can apologize for some streaming issues here. Try to get you corrected here shortly. Let's see if I can adjust something here. Escape that. <laughs> so it's more of an issue with the Wi Fi here? Well, I lost the Wi Fi here at the school, so. We got to get out of I'm on a mobile hotspot, which usually works pretty good, but it's not working right now. Let's see if I can get it to work any better. Apologize, those watching. The second problem we've had all year with with basket boys basketball, so. I'm not sure why it's happening. Come see why these folks and others drive several miles past several other dealerships to do business with us here at Maple City Dodge. The reason I came to Maple City Dodge was due to Gary Harwood. I've bought several vehicles here and I keep coming back because you can't beat the service. We came to Maple City Dodge for their outstanding sales and service. We've purchased our last two vehicles from Maple City Dodge and we'll be back again. It's worth the drive to Maple City Dodge because we have the best sales and service and we'll prove it.
that you kind of have after Hornell, Hornell's game against Wellsville. Highly emotional, great win. Just hope your guys don't come up, out with a kind of a letdown, but they look like they came out strong here tonight. Yeah. And it hasn't been a lot of one-on-one -on -one play. They really are playing team basketball. They moved the ball well. Nice hesitation by Timmy Smith who dropped it off to Liberto. Good, you know, what's good about Vinny Liberto is he's an excellent defender too. So a lot of times on subs you worry about the, the sub being able to handle himself on the defensive end, but he seems to do very well. Trevor Smith with a three-point shot. Nice move by Matt Smith. But, you know, and, and Hornell opened up a pretty decent lead here in the first quarter, but you could tell it wasn't that Cuba Rush was a bad team. No. You could tell they're a quality, well-coached team number of guys that can handle the basketball. A nice play by number 11. Time out, Hornell. Ben Siegel. Full timeout. Apologize for those watching on Facebook. We're experiencing some technical difficulties here. We are we are so what are they seeing out there? Bob? It's jumping. The screen's jumping. You know, it's stuttering. Our voices are coming in clear. That's all that matters. <laughs> uh, but this is the first game we've had problems with all year long, which is pretty impressive. I don't know why I got kicked off. But school system kicked me off somehow. Twenty-three sixteen Hornell up on top. Yeah, the Rebels have kind of kept themselves in this game. It looked like they could get out of hand there in the first quarter a little bit, but like I said, they played really good defense. Now was making some open looks. In and out. But rebound, Milner. And inside. Not much, but Timmy or Matt Smith had his hand on his hip as he going up, so I think he did affect the shot a little bit. It's number 10, Dawson Sanderson. Downtown by Tomsky. Oops, stolen away, Milner. Oh, what a take. Oh. Well, I was just going to say, that was a bad idea by Spencer. He had Tomsky had just hit a three, was wide open in the corner. And it looked like he forced that, which he did, but he got away with it. Yep. 
inside. Nice little drive that time. Sanderson. Again, apologize to those watching on Facebook for having some technical difficulties. We'll try to get it fixed here shortly. Chase. Nice pass by Chase. Oh, and foul from behind. Gonna send Milner to the line. No argument by Smith. No. The crowd didn't think it was a foul, but he just caught his elbow as It's a game of mismatches, and Hornell has a mismatch with, with Lyon and Milner inside. Um, Frank's a big guy, but he hasn't proved to, to be much on the defensive end. Right, right. So it's nice to see Hornell having a high basketball cue and taking advantage of, of the mismatch. Again, we'll try to get back and a good stream for you here shortly. Maybe I, what I can see the difference is, is talking to their coach uh, before the game and them playing in the Allegheny County League where um, they're a C school but they end up playing a lot of D schools is maybe they're getting away with some of those passes that they're attempting against Hornell. And they're just not getting away with it with Hornell's speed and athleticism. Right. So maybe there'll be an adjustment that and they have to go through. But they're hanging in there, down 10, about four and a half minutes left in the second quarter. Nice pass. Oh, and Milner couldn't complete it, but saves it. Freeland says, give me the three, no good. Milner needed to get off the ground a little higher that time. I think he kind of shot flat-footed. Well, just for him being ready for that pass. That right. Was, that was a great job by Dante. Oh, over the back on Matt Smith. Well, I wasn't quite sure if they weren't might not call it on Tofino because it looked like he pulled Matt's arm over once. But Matt, you're right. Matt was over the top first. So that's the third foul on Matt Smith. So he'll sit down the rest of the first half. They'll miss Matt's defense at the top of the key. Thirty-two twenty-two. To those watching on Facebook, we apologize for some streaming issues. We'll get you back in order here shortly. Yeah, good by, job by Chase Freeland tonight. Not. You know, after the good game he had the other night, he's not pressing and trying to be something that he's not. He's really letting the game come to him. Why did they stop play? When we hit a... I'm not sure what was going on there. Why the officials would stop anything? Well, maybe it was something to do with the shot clock. Shot clock was right. Our, my shot clock and their shot clock were synced up perfectly, so. Chase for three. Wow, he took that in there quick. He made this. Okay, said he hit him in the head. I thought he was giving the offensive foul motion, but kind of bailed him out on that one. He came in there a little bit out of control. Kind of. <laughs> 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 the 
Seneca Zoo had anything to do with that or not. They'll take credit for the yes, missed free throw. Nice block inside there. Coming down with it is Smith. Couldn't get it to fall. And those just joining us on Facebook will clean up the streaming issues we've had. Here we got kicked off the school system for some reason. With all technology comes problems. <laughs> uh, but we've been lucky this year. It's certainly our second time we've been kicked off during any game. So we're on a mobile hotspot right now, which is jumping all over the place. So we'll get you fixed back up here shortly. Tommy Pickle in the game. Good hands by Tommy. Good Tommy shielding the defender, or offensive. Yeah, he's base guard. Yeah, he is. Good job by Tommy. Tommy last year on JVs. Tommy did a real good job last year on he JVs. He did. Sometimes it's just the way the, that works. You got to pay your dues. Sometimes it's tough for these guys to go from playing a lot in, in JVs to that first year not playing. But like I said, it's great that he's yep. getting the opportunity tonight. Wow. Spencer's going to do that. He's got to stand strong. He was halfway down <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> before the guy got there. We're now working it around. Milner. A little hook. He's down. He's got that down, doesn't he, Joe? He does. He's got great hands. Like I said, he, I think he's got a little out of whack here for a few games in a row. Just hope he picks it up. And ready for second. <coughs> Excuse me. Air ball that time. You can see the crowd lets him know it. Get it. Get it right back to Dante. Get it right back to him. Yeah, he would too. Smith. Still looks a little pale, you know. watching on Facebook again. We'll get the stream back up and going here at halftime. So we might, we're gonna cut you off and then come right back. Seconds here for half. Inside, Wyand. 
No good. Good rebound by Milner underneath. Good job, Mark. I was going to call Marjo. <laughs> Dante. Nah, he's got both hands. He does, he does well with both the left and the right hand. Okay, we'll be back. Join Connors and Ferris in supporting the Kelly Tough Every Score, benefiting Hunter's Hope. Every time the Bills score, children win. For more information, visit connorsandferris.com. If you get hurt at work, you want to be able to turn to a professional you can trust. Someone on your side. Call 262-COMP today and get the results you deserve. Connors and Ferris, committed to serving you. Okay, welcome back. Third quarter, 45-25. Let's take the number five, Sean McNeil. Nice put back by Milner. Yeah, but Milner keeps up the hot hand. He had 16 points in that first half for Hornell. Nice block by Milner from behind. Dante at 16, Luke Smith 6, Matt Smith 6, Spencer Wine 5, Derek McComsky 5, Chase Friedland 3, and Timmy Smith 2. So pretty well balanced scoring other than Milner with those 16 first half points. Yep. Trevor Smith for Cuba Rushford with 12 points. 3 by Freeland. Ben Frank for Hugh Rushford. They really need to get something out of him. They really didn't get anything out of him offensively or defensively in the first half. So for them to compete, they need to do something with Ben Frank inside. That's a line with a nice left hand put back. with his second bucket of the half. I'm sure that the coach, Cuba Rushford, Carl Holmes told his team, look, we can, you know, we can score, but we're not gonna get back into this game unless we get some stops on defense. Right. We're now at 52 points basically now with five and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Smith increasing his point total, leading the Rebels in the first half. Trevor Smith, now we're going back and forth here. You know, and if you're, if you're kind of analyzing both teams, Hornell definitely running the better offense. Their ball movement tonight has been really well, really good. Yeah. 
points. Second half already for Miguel. Today's game is brought to you by Community Bank N.A. Stop up the corner of Big Creek and Seneca Roads in Hornell. Community Bank N.A. By Hornell Gardens, long-term care facility and short-term rehab. Since 1970, Hornell Gardens. First Heritage, Federal Credit Union. Connors and Ferris, thank you very much for your support. And of course, Maple City Dodge. Airport and Seneca Road, stop and see Gary Harwood. Great sales, great service, Maple City Dodge. Nice take and put in. 55 to 40, Joe. Basket. Remember, he got in that early foul trouble for, for the Rebels. They had to sit a lot of that first half. Three-pointer. Chase Friedel. He's got nine points with three three-pointers. Nice little take. The Mets. Oh, Timmy. Nice pass to <laughs> Milliner. Uh, I think that was his intended, but he shot it and it came right back down. Ben Frank showing he's got a little outside game. I haven't seen any defense in the last five trips down the court. Have you, Joe? <laughs> no. Uh, it's been a I will say, with, with Clements coming in, uh, I looked down because I figured, well, geez, he's a senior, and now he's back in the second half. He's a sophomore. Definitely looks older than that, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Not a technical, is it? A technical foul on Max Smith, I believe. Yeah, that's his. He likes getting them a couple times a year. <laughs> kind of talking as he was walking away from the referee. It must be the referee heard what he said. Yep. Which, you know, could be right. Rushford has this down to 16 points. Coach was telling his team in the last timeout that let's try to get it down to 10 going into the fourth quarter. So it looks like they're about halfway there. The foul shots, now we'll do the technical. got this thing down to 14 points. Still on the third here. McNell with a nice rebound.
Cornell kind of lost their rhythm there a little bit. Brought the lead down to 13 for the Rebels. Freeland for three again. Bam! I will say this. I, 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 you know, I, I'm not sure about Coach Coles, but... I, I think when he started inserting Chase Freeland in the game, he wasn't expecting the, the three-point shots right. as what he would contribute to the team. But boy, he's, he's been great the last two games from the three-point line. It's not worth saving. Yeah. No, it's definitely not worth saving over there. That will be one of the advantages of the, the new gym, or the new set of bleachers for coming in for next year. Yep. Safer for some people getting up to their seats. They certainly got their money's worth out of this out of this gym. What I understand, Bob, that they can't sand the floor anymore. I think it's some, it's, at, at some point. Yeah, it gets to be. They can't, uh, they can't refinish it any further. The nails are as far in as they go, Joe. Yeah, so. <laughs> uh, so it's not only because they like a new gym that there's a no. lot of necessity involved, not only with the safety of the bleachers, but the, the court. Yep. have the luxury press box. Is, is that what you're saying, Bob? Yep, yeah, we'll be uh, <laughs> air conditioned and heated. <laughs> yeah, there's that little 15-foot jump shot from Derek McComsey. He looks real comfortable at that level. Yep. Down to 16 seconds. It's kind of a lost art. Behind the back, Smith. Freeland for three. Oh, almost went in. We'll be back after this message. Oh, emojis. I thought the conversation just got dumber. Ugh, internet trolls. Just ignore them. I like you just the way you are. I believe in you. She's a hugger. Give her a squeeze. <laughs> Help up the hand. Ah, there you go. Thanks, mate. You're killing it, 
Okay, welcome back. And Hornell with a 13 point lead. Coast goals has put Luke Smith in, still a little bit under the weather. Down 13 with a quarter row, the turnovers will kill you. Yeah. So you got to play good defense, limit the turnovers, and be efficient on offense in order to make a big comeback. Again, I think that was Jeremy Kukumski again. Oh, a nice three. That's McNell. He, he scored zero points in the first half, and he has uh, not, uh, nine points in the, what, just a little over a quarter. So maybe Coach Holmes has found something he can use in the future with Matt McNell being a, a junior. Yep. And welcome back. If you're watching on Facebook, apologize. We're still having some streaming issues. 67-55, Hornell on top. There's a three. And Frank. Look at that. We hadn't done anything inside. He's six foot four, but he's kind of showed a little life on the outside. Yeah, he is. Turnover now. They can cut it down to seven here, Joe. Oh, there's something a little amiss there. Oh, oh and he missed it. I think it was halfway down. And Freeland puts himself in place to get the rebound. Yeah, when I was playing around, like you said, they're down. They got this thing down to nine points. Yeah. Still about five and a half minutes left. Kumski. No good. So that's probably an ill advised shot just because we can get that shot anytime we yeah. want. Time out, Hornell. Seven point game. So, you know, and you gotta figure in, it's, you have a couple sick players, you know, that doesn't help. Not using any excuse, but you know what I'm saying? Well, not only that, but you can blame Hornell in this aspect. Dante Miller scored 16 points in the first half. Yeah. And maybe he's gotten two touches in the second half. Yeah. Um, so he was in there for part of that uh, third quarter, but other than that, but we haven't really gone to what was our hot hand in the first half. Right. So I see they're entering him in the game in right now. So we'll see if uh, Coach Goals can get him to slow the game down, get get some touches inside to Spencer Wyatt and Dante Mill. Poulos and Roselle, attorneys at law. Thanks for your support. Wyand Chiropractic. Hornell Erie Federal Credit Union. Marino's 110 Loader Street in Hornell. Yum Frozen Yogurt right across from the high school. Got two businesses that advertise across the high school now. Of course, AirtightofNewYork.com. Spray foam insulation. Remax, hometown choice, 117 Main Street. Gambino, Marino. Community Bank, NA. Corners of Big Creek and Seneca Road. Hornell Gardens. First Heritage Federal Credit Union coming to Hornell in March. The other business that I was talking about is coming in. So a seven point game. And the other factor, Matt Smith. Yeah. Three pointer, he's been out with foul trouble. Two pointer by McComsky. Nice 
nice rebound. Yeah, it is. And, oh, I'm surprised they didn't call a foul on as, the, as a Milliner comes down with it. Yeah, Sanderson fouled his own shot. Nice on that one. Very aggressive. Like you said, we're now lost to Cuba Rush. What, two years ago, Joe, you said? No, I was more like six years oh, so, ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little different, I guess. Yeah, they won uh, sectionals that year that they beat Hornell. Should have been off. It was a good save by the Hornell. Didn't see who that was, but. So 69-60. Yeah, Sanderson's been aggressive off the dribble. He's doing a good job of pushing the ball in the paint. Sometimes it's a little out of control, but like I said. Needed to penetrate Hornell's defense to get some guys some open looks. <coughs> Again, apologize. Welcome back for those on Facebook. And when you lose your stream here, it's not an easy fix. Unfortunately, it takes time to you gotta reload a stream key inside the, the encoder and make sure the camera's in sync and the laptop. <laughs> uh, people don't realize what I go through just to try to get this back on the air. That's why losing a stream is, makes my blood pressure go way up. <laughs> to figure out why it happened here. The school kicked me off. JV game went without a problem. Uh, I wonder if next year they'll, they'll have uh, you know, the ability to, to hardwire. I don't really want, I don't want no. a hardwire, to tell you the truth, because I have three different things here that work on a Wi-Fi. Then I have to hardwire all three things and that'd be oh. almost impossible. Way to stay with it, Dante. Dante's Inferno. Yeah, that's a great job of holding up Hornell recognizing, hey, we didn't get Dante the ball for yeah. a long stretch there. Let's get it back to him. You called it 16 yep. points in the first half, nothing in the second half until now, right? Yep. And and hats off to, you know, Cuba Rushford. They I think they probably keyed in on him too, you know? Yep. Hats off to Cuba Rushford, though. Went down 20 a half. Yeah. Our customers expect the highest level of sales and service here at Maple City Dodge. I don't buy a lot of trucks because they last so long, but I know I'll be back to Maple City Dodge for my next one. We always shop around, and we've ended up buying our last six vehicles from Maple City Dodge. They always have the best deals. I've always found their service department to be prompt and courteous. Come on down to Maple City Dodge where we make buying a car easy and fun. Connors and Ferris, workers' comp attorneys, offices in Buffalo and Rochester, proud supporters of the Bills, the Sabres, and your Horn All Red Raiders. Connors and Ferris. Maple City Dodge, 2017's got to get them off the lot. They're having great deals on 2017's Dodge Chrysler Jeep, Maple City Dodge. Rhonda Wilsey and Howard Handick, all 382-4539. Offices in the old Landman building, right next to Burger King, across from City Hall. Howard Hanna and Rhonda Wilsey. John and Dagan, general trial practice, serving the Southern Tier since 1989. Call 324-6690. Main Street Redemption Center. Put your cans and bottles in there. Open seven days a week, nine to six, Monday through Friday, nine to three, Saturday and Sunday. Of course, Poulos and Roselle, attorneys at law, Bill Poulos, Tim Roselle, 324-7333, Poulos and Roselle, and Dr. John Wyant, Dr. Joseph McKay at Wyant Chiropractic, 20 Park Drive in Hornell. Get well and stay well with a visit to Wyant Chiropractic. So here we go, 71, Hornell back up by 11. What was their largest lead, Joe? Were they up by 20 at one point? I think they were, weren't Definitely they? Definitely 20 and a half, right? Oh, 20 and a half, you're correct. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, and it... <laughs> Like I said, it, it probably drives these coaches crazy. You try to make sure your team doesn't have a letdown. It's just very hard to keep them focused. That's what separates sometimes uh, teams that move 
on in the in the sectional. So yep. Teams that can focus on a consistent basis. So Cornell has shown the ability in a lot of those games that they've had to struggle and keep in the games and ended up pulling them out. So. Timmy Smith shot no good. Is it, it's going to be only a two anyway. It was inside the line, but. Ooh, nice hands. Yes, Spencer Lyon. Skulls wants to run some clock. He doesn't want to play around. Yeah, there, because the speed of Cuba Russia has been proven. You know, I mean, you've seen, we've had like 10 points scored in the matter of like 30 seconds in this game. Not by one team, but, you know, up and back and forth, just exchanging uh, baskets. Yep. And these games are really important because... Oh, okay. Because sectional point-wise, Hornell's going to end up in that area where they're, you know, either there could be the four or five, you know, or, you know... So I think there's a... Wasn't there 16 teams in this bracket? Yeah. So if they're in that 8-9 game, whether they get a home game or not, you know what I mean? And I forgot to check with B1 or, what, you know, if there's a the separation again. But with this little win streak, they can pull up into that, you know, 5-6 seed. Yeah, if Hornell can hold on here, they'll be 10-4, and four, which looks good on paper, you know what I mean? 10-4 yep. yep. and four is an impressive record. So these, these points are they, important. How quick they get down court, Joe. Yeah. Just look at it, and they get a basket out of it. They are a fast team. Oh, and a turnover by McComsky. Oh, and, and good job by Milner. And it wasn't a turnover. Milner dove right on the ball. Timeouts. Yeah, that's a good job by Coach Schools. Get that timeout when Dante had control of the yep. basketball. Full timeouts. Hornell Erie Federal Credit Union protection for you for over 50 years. Stop and see Marty Piccolo at Hornell Erie Federal Credit Union. Right around the corner is Marino's 110 Loader Street. Serving lunch is 11.30 and dinner is till 10 p.m. at night. Bars open to one at Marino's. Yum frozen yogurt across from the high school. 12 different flavors of self-serve frozen yogurt. About 50 different toppings. Yum Froyo. Airtight of New York.com. Spray foam insulation. Commercial residential. New and old construction. 368-2842. Remax hometown choice. Reggie Gambino, Martha Marino, 117 Main Street in Hornell. Community Bank NA. Corners of Big Creek and Seneca Roads up in North Hornell. Hornell Gardens. Long term, -term care facility, short term rehab. Hornell Gardens. Privately owned since 1970, of course, right across from St. James Hospital. Sometimes we've complained about the number of timeouts, but that gives you plenty of opportunity to get those sponsor names. Yes, and they keep adding to it, Joe. Thank you very much. And the kids appreciate it, and the parents, and the people that are able to watch this from can't make the game. Well, oh, but not, not only that, but just the ability to, to not have to yourself hold a video camera oh, yeah. while you're trying to watch your kid play. Yep. Let's see. That was a big thing. Did you ever do that when you have a little camera? And That's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> How many good shots you get out you're of like, it? Any, any, anytime <laughs> something went quick, everyone's, you drop the camera or you oh, miss it. That's terrible. I've transferred a lot of, you know, I still do that. People bring me their videotapes and stuff, and I'm like, oh, that's horrible. <laughs> because I get watching the game, I forget to move the camera, and it's just almost impossible. Trevor Ooh, Smith, that looked good. And they come down with the rebound again. Oh, and he should have went up with those left. Geez, they're getting, how many? That's three offensive rebounds, Joe. Trevor Smith doing a good job in there for the Rebels. Just couldn't convert. Yeah, it's still a nine point game. Minute and 23 seconds left. Laments from the corner. Good. We're down to nine points. We're down Time to six out. points. And we 
talked about it, and you can tell right from the get-go that this was a decent team. First Heritage Federal Credit Union just started advertising today. Going to open up a location right across from the high school. Remember the old Steuben Trust Company drive through is now going to be First Heritage. And sorry for our streaming issues today. We finally got you back on. Like my dad always say, all you got to do is tune into the last two minutes of any basketball game and you know what's been going on. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he was a big basketball player himself, obviously. Because <laughs> it's true, you could have watched that overtime game of you know, the last game and not even cared about what happened. We went back and forth on yeah. that game. But I don't know how many lead changes there were. It was in that game, but you're right. Kind of got the whole... <laughs> Everything in a nutshell there in the yeah. overtime. So this is this is interesting here. Ornell's only up six with the ball. They got to take care of the basketball. One twenty left. Rebels are in the one and one. They got a foul to give here, so they can be really aggressive on Ornell and not worry about any free throws. Now oh, they're getting in the double team. Yeah, they're in a one three one trap. There's a foul. Like I said, he's okay with that foul. He needed to get to that bonus anyway. And he was telling his guys in the huddle, look, you, everybody's got to read, meaning you're in a zone, you got to be reading the basketball and go for the steals. You can't get so locked in that you... Right. And you know, you got a full 30 seconds, you know? Ornell's the bonus. Gonna send Milner to the line. He's been pretty good at the line over the last four or five games. I'm sure Luke Smith can't wait for this week to be over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another game coming up home against Dansville on Friday, so tune into Pike Sports for that. <laughs> I thought it skimmed off the glass. Oh, Dante. A little bit too... Uh, M or McComsky couldn't oh, make the nice pass. pass. And there's a timeout. Just like that, Joe. A two-point game. Well, obviously, they, they just put Col Colston Salter into the game. Had played the whole game. Obviously, must be a three-point shooter, and he bangs it. Shot clock is off. So you assume, assume, so let's see, what, what are we down to, 22 seconds? My clock might be off, so. Yeah, and you could have handled the three-point shot, but then to compound it with, with an ill-advised turnover. Yeah, McComsky just tried to throw a pass that he didn't need to, you know what I mean? See uh, Derek's older brother, Gavin McComsky's in the crowd. Mr. McComsky over there. Gavin goes to Alfred State. Yeah, so we're down to 23 seconds. Let me reset my clock. If I get this spit out here, I don't want to talk. I don't want to say anything here. <laughs> so we're up to 23.9 seconds. Rebels full court press. Got to be aggressive for the steal first and then go for the foul. Yep. Hold Ornell's still. doing a great job of there not getting fouled. Yeah, they did a very good job. Down to 
12 seconds. Going to send Luke Smith the line. Very important. Free, uh, every, every free throw is important. You always hear me preach about it, but if there's going to be two big ones, this is it. Oh, yeah. We'll see. Luke's been sick. Let's hope he's got the energy to, to convert. And I think Coach... Holmes wanted that foul before then, but I think he I think he's okay with the kids' effort. They were really going for the steal. No, they were looking for the steal, and that's what he needed to do, and then he, he was okay with the foul, but I think he probably would have liked that foul probably five seconds earlier. Let's take a look inside both puddles here. Nice crowd from Cuba Rushford. In fact, there's a gentleman and lady sitting in the stands. I think they're from Horn. I think, I don't know. They're sitting amongst the Cuba Rushford people, but I know them. Can't remember their names. I'm not sure. Yeah, you can't see them from where you are. But Co Coach Humps did a good job of, of walking his guys through the play. He said, first, we need four guys crashing the boards. Get the rebound. He told him not to frantically go up the court. Go up to go up the court with a good pace, but he didn't want him out, out of control. Right. So I think he did a really good job of walking him through the steps that they they need to get a decent shot off. Another timeout. <laughs> Let's take well, a look. <laughs> yeah, strategy changes now that it's three. Let's take a look at our cheerleaders. You know, in the years past, we've had those. Uh, they did some of it a little bit earlier, the flipping across the court. <laughs> they were doing it earlier. Yeah, we saw Julia Ashworth doing. I can't remember who else was flipping. Julia used to be my neighbor. I think I remember like the Eggman girl we used to used to be the one that started the nonsense. She, well, she would go over, I swear, flip 20 times. Seneca Street Zoo, of course, you're talking about Jill Ogman. She's engaged to Jason Whitney, our JV coach. Right, there you go. Nice segue. Yep. Yeah, but she used to do it, then you, you could tell she would have to stabilize herself after she was done. She was a Buffalo Jill. Got Tommy Piccolo and Spencer Wyatt just recorded in. So I, I don't know if Coach Skulls going defense. I'm not sure. Well, I'm sure he doesn't want. I would thought Spencer would be underneath, but maybe he's worried about a foul in this instance. Give him a free shot at the free throw. Oh, and that's a good one there. No foul. Oh, yep, good foul. Yeah, well, well, I think it was too quick to foul, don't you, Joe? Yeah. Where's their big man? He's not in. Is he, did he foul out? I don't think he fouled out. But. I'm surprised he's not in for rebound. Look at the size of the kids in there rebounding. But as we talked earlier, he hasn't really been much of a rebound. <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> Just for height, I don't know. I think it's one of those, he, you know, as far as that, was fighting in there. Right? Yeah. What do you do? Try, you try to make both of them, I think. Definitely, definitely make both of them. Yeah. You said there's just a little bit too much time to, to go for the pop. Mm. 
I don't know why. <laughs> Not sure what that call was, but. Previously, they're up four, and, and, and Spencer foul. The strategy only works when you're up three. Again, for, for those that are joining us late, and you know, obviously we're, we're cut off from the rest of the game. What? Oh. There's ten fouls. Oh, okay. So. I, I thought it was one and one myself. I didn't see that ten up there, my fault. Yeah, see, he told the official said it was one and one initially. Even though the scoreboard says ten, which he should have re realized, he told the kid it was one and one. I forget what what do we have on the clock? Eight seconds, Joe. I think. Seven. I think it was seven. Eight seconds. Obviously, there wasn't ten fouls. So the question is, how many fouls was there? Because if there was ten, it would be a double bonus. Yeah. Should be our ball of anything, because we came down. We came down with a rebound, right? Yeah, they're going to have one out ball. So they're, they are. No foul, they're saying. And that's going to, Cornell's going to win. Jeez. What I was going to say is that it would be amazing if Cornell played three overtime games in a row. <laughs> that's what we were headed to. So any final thoughts? Uh, Cuba Rushford, like I said, we were up by 20, Hornell was, and... That's a tale of two halves. I think Joe School had to be thrilled with the first half. His guys came out focused after an emotional win against Wellsville, but then they kind of went flat in that second half. Yeah, you're and, right. And now it's kind of a disappointment. Um, you said they play Dansville on Friday. Yes. Yep. At home, and then they get Leroy at home next week. Yep. Now Leroy is pretty good. They beat uh, they beat this team from Cuba Rushford. And they beat us already. Yeah, handily. So. <coughs> Excuse me. And they beat uh, Livonia. Right. So, so Leroy's had a pretty good season. I guess apparently they just lost to Perry, but that should be a great game next week. Okay, Joe. That's it uh, until Friday. Bob Placer along with Joe Flint. We'll see you Friday. <laughs>